Nation, this is your area. This is shaping as a disaster for the Liberal Party. Who's to blame oh, for this happening? God, Tom, let's turn it up. I mean, it's not. Well, do, you, do you disagree? You know, the fact is we've got, we found candidates. They're very good candidates. They need to be endorsed and we need to get on with the job. So, you know, it's not a disaster. There are about three or four seats that need to be endorsed and we need to get on with it. No, I mean, I couldn't agree with you more. We've got Sally Stegall taking coal donations, uh, trying to hide the fact that she took coal donations. And, you know, the people of Warringah deserve a choice. They deserve the opportunity to send her a message that it's not good enough to say one thing on the climate while taking coal donations in the other hand. Now, do you want to ask me about... So why doesn't she have a candidate to run point? against? Who's to blame for this? Who's to, well, um, I'm sure there are lots of people to blame. You know, um, they, there's an old Chinese saying, which is uh, success has a thousand forebears, but um, uh, failure is an orphan, when we, in fact, know it's the other way around. Um, I don't care who's to blame. What I want is a candidate in Warringah so the people of Warringah actually have a choice. Same in Benelong, same in Hughes... Same okay. all over in Dobell. Um, the Australian people rely on us to provide good and sensible government and we need to give them that choice. Alex Hawke, has he been dragging this out on behalf of the Prime Minister? I don't know, Tom, has he? I mean, I, I don't know. I'm not involved in those discussions. You've got, you and the New South Wales Liberal Party have no idea of any role he's played. No, I, I, I am not the New South Wales Liberal Party. I am but I'm here. I am one member of the New South Wales Liberal Party. My message to my party okay, is Okay, so that, but that's the question. To your knowledge, has Alex Hawke been a key factor in dragging... I'm sorry, I can't provide... I, I, don't have any, I, I don't have any knowledge outside what I've read in the newspapers. Okay. Um, look, let's go to some bright news in your neck of the woods, Pat. The borders are opening. Good news. Yes, it's they happening. are. It is would, you, would you like this to be the last time we have to say this? In other words... Don't get another variant and think that shutting the borders is the best way to keep COVID out. Well, I do hope that that's the case. Uh, I hope that, once again, Australia is whole, uh, that people can come to Western Australia, go down to Margaret River, see the great wineries, come to my electorate of Perth, go to great bakeries like Miller and Baker in my electorate, go to the Perth Stadium and have a great time in Western Australia and, more importantly, that families and businesses can reconnect with their colleagues and loved ones. So... It is very exciting and people have been very patient. Uh, I think we should also acknowledge, though, that this has made a been a very successful measure. Uh, and I thank the Premier and uh, all of those health officials in Western Australia for that. Uh, hopefully we don't need a measure like this again. But I will okay, also so say that my... Successful. Has it, been, has it been proportionate throughout? Mm. Um, well, it has opened and closed depending on what's been needed. I think... You know, we can look in the rear vision mirror. What I'm thinking about is what's the next challenge. Um, the challenge here in Western Australia is we are starting to see the spread of Omicron. For me, I'm worried about what that means yeah. in aged care. I'm but the rear view mirror matters here, Pat, enough... because it, it informs what we do next. That's why I'm asking. So has yeah. it always been proportionate, the use of the border? Oh, look, I, I was particularly happy when I saw that there was an expansion of compassionate travel exemptions. That had been something that had weighed on my mind quite heavily over the course of the last two years. So I'm... I've been pretty honest about that. OK. So, so there were some elements that should have been a bit more compassionate. Is that what you're saying? Oh, we've, I've, we've always said that these are decisions for the state governments to make. For me, I always mm. found that where people were trying to travel for compassionate reasons and they couldn't, that was a really tough thing that I've okay. found quite difficult and something I hope we don't have to return to again. But having said that, uh, it, it's... Uh, is also compassionate to try and save the lives of people. And that's what this measure has been about, particularly when we didn't have, okay. at one point, a vaccination program at all. At another point, the vaccination program was too slow. At a third point, you know, we didn't have the plan for boosters. At another point, we didn't have a plan for vaccinating children. Right. So um, I think that's as close you know, as we'll get to Pat Gorman today in his red tie. Not totally comfortable the entire time with everything to do with the borders, but they, they can be my words. You don't have to repeat them, Pat. Jason was shaking his head. So this must mean Jason, as a, a member of the federal government, has said that WA's over, overall handling of the border has not been proportionate. Jason? Uh, Tom, I, I don't think it has been. I, I, I agree with Pat that, um, you know, people have families have been reached asunder, Australians have been kept apart. Uh, now our nation was built to be whole. It hasn't been for the last couple of years. 
Um, so no, I don't. I, I think that there have been times over and over again when the Western Australian government has overreacted, and this has been used as a a political tool. So even now, no, Jason, so that, even, that is incorrect. Even now, Okay. No, even, no. even now, you can, well, can criticise the border measures, but don't say I'm that. I'm often wrong. People tell me that all the time. Okay. Well, in my view, it has been used as a political tool, and every well, time you make so, that argument, I, I you must wrong. also make the argument that the federal government has used international borders as a political tool. Is that the argument you're making? No, I'm not making that argument at all. In fact, Pat, when we closed not. the borders in February 2020, um, the Labor Party criticised us for doing that. And I think it is now well established that that single measure saved tens of thousands of lives of Australians. But what about opening a bit because, earlier, Jason? Could the international sorry. border have been opened early with all the COVID we had? Or well, look, you know, um, the fact of the matter is that, uh, I, yeah, I'm, I've always been more pro-open the borders than keep them closed. Um, but, you know, the government has taken uh, the decision that it has taken. Could we have gone sooner? Should we have gone later? These are decisions that uh, get made at higher levels than, than, uh, than okay. you know, people on this panel. But look, from the evidence I saw, I thought we, should, we could have open them earlier, but we didn't. I, I understand that. Um, I, I think we're talking about we quibbling over weeks rather than um, months. Only weeks. OK. All right. I might be downplaying the panel's power. If we talk ourselves down, Jason, as a segment, we're not going to get the things we want done with Australia. So, you know, let's just think about that one. Let me give you this one, Patrick. Put on your promoter's hat. You've been demonising us in the East for so long. What's your slogan to get people from the East travelling over to WA again? Um, Western Australia, or I, I always say Perth is the best of Earth. We've got the best food, the best people, the most beautiful rivers, beaches, everything you could want is right here. And uh, I know there's been many commentators across the country uh, bemoaning the fact they haven't been able to visit. Uh, any media outlet, any journalist that comes right. here uh, with that excitement, I'm happy to take them around and show them the best of Earth right here in Perth. And um, I'm also excited, you know, I've, you know, I think we are one country. I'm excited that West Australians will be able to get out and see some of the other fabulous parts of this country, be it visiting uh, Cairns, visiting uh, the good people of Canberra and the amazing national uh, monuments and national exhibitions okay. that we have there, or indeed the northern beaches in Sydney, a beautiful part of Australia. Um, uh, you know, true. maybe they've got a slightly nervous Liberal candidate there at the moment, but everything else in the Northern <laughs> Beaches is absolutely fabulous. Well, I tell you, Perth, the best of Earth, yeah, it's OK, but you acting as the personal guide is quite the offer. So you I might know, be very I know. In your seat Will you pick me up from the airport you know, too, Patrick? Offers now. Jason, I'll pick you up from the airport. Um, I'll book dinner <laughs> and uh, I'll make sure you see some Candle of the best lit, of Earth in Australia. I'm candlelit. <laughs> All right, I can sense some carpool karaoke coming on, so make sure you do it, uh, and do it horizontally so we can use it on the program as well. Uh, I'm going to let the viewers know how the sausage is made here because sometimes, uh, against my sort of better inclinations, I ask you to any topics you want to talk about today. I always reserve the right to refuse them. You wrote today, Jason Flinsky, Homes are caught dark money fund. And then you never responded to me when I asked what that was. What's what's his dark it's money fund? It's called Climate Two It's called Climate 200, Tom. I mean, what we have is, uh, you know, and it's called the Climate Outcomes Foundation, where we don't know where the money's being raised, how it's being raised. Um, we, You know, he tells us where it's going, but we don't exactly know. And I think the common parlance for this at the moment is dark money and politics. And that's what we have. And I, I mean, I, I listen to your friend... But is it, any different, uh, is it anything different sorry. to what the major parties do? Yeah, it's absolutely different to what the major parties do. I mean, it's just insulting to say otherwise. The major parties declare all their donations. So, you know, to say that, oh, you're all the same, it's just so offensive it's not funny. No, this is but not, different. Not, no, this no, is I didn't dark say, money. Well, I was just asking. Sorry, Tom. Yeah, but, but you, you, you have to declare the amount, but not who it comes to if it's under a certain amount. That's right, Tom. That's absolutely right. Mm. But you know what else? Right. We actually combine the Labor Party and the Liberal Party, and the National Party for that matter, they um, aggregate um, everyone who gives them money. So at the end of the day, if you give $1,000 to 15 different candidates, that gets aggregated and reported. 
When you do that for these fake independents, these Climate 200 candidates, you know, somehow they've all got the same slogans, they all use the same website, they've all got the same CRM, they're all saying the same things, but if you donate to 15 of them, they don't get aggregated. Now, they are, they are using okay. this election as some sort of corporate takeover of the Australian Parliament, using every loophole they can okay. find pa to right. hide who is donating to them, and that is just, the just about out of time of dark money. Oh, isn't it funny we've run out of time now? OK, fair enough. I said just about. Well, we're nearly. Pat Gorman, in 30 seconds, you're concerned about the Clive Palmer money. Let me just ask this simply to you. He's tipping in a lot of money. Should we look at a cap at how much one person can contribute? Oh, uh, yes, let's deny freedom, freedom of political speech. Wouldn't want that. At least we know he's spending I money. find it... I find it very funny that those who criticise the coalition for their lack of action on climate change are attacked by people like Jason, but Clive oh, Palmer... Uh, you mean before or after they took money the from coal party. miners? There is before or after they took money from coal miners? From the Liberal oh, Party. No, 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 no. I'm just asking for... Right, I'm so just asking really for consistent standards. Seconds. I'm just asking for consistent standards. So it's OK for Climate 200 candidates to try and hide money from coal Mate, miners. You've been but in it's government not okay for, for me to criticise You write okay, the just, laws. Just a thing. Neither your just laws they're No, no. With. Oh, Pat, you and haven't those? we tried to you change it? Them? And who's blocked us every single right. time? You know, you know what? The uh, Labor Party. The Labor Party. Break. Jason, Patrick, I'm getting a, a hint as to the, the increased passion. Shall we call it that? Do we, do we think campaign? my candlelit dinner in Perth is off? I'm just wondering. <laughs> What did you say, sorry? I'm getting a sense that Pat won't be picking me up from the airport. <laughs> I think your lift is in jeopardy. Um, <laughs> that, I, I do think that. But I don't know. Look, if it's reciprocal, maybe let him go to the Northern Beaches first.